Lawmark Seal and Beast Eye. I shall grant thee feed. Yeah, Eye and Claw. He wants us to go and bring death. Sacred Seal granted by Garonk, the Beast Clergyman. A rare trinket which allows incantations to be scaled with strength. Hell yeah, the claw mark represents Garonk's wrath, enhances bestial incantations learned from Garonk. And then the other thing was a key item. It's kind of a treasure finder. Claw marked stone eye received from Garonk. It is said to tremble when near death root. The murky violet iris writhes as if alive. I am not sated. Feed me more death. Hey everyone, how's it going? And welcome back to Let's Play Elden Ring. Who's ready for some platforming? Some of which will be on horseback. Yeah, you are. We have more of those chained up beasts from inside the sanctum out here. Just to be lashed away at by the rain. So it's all going to start with a drop down onto this rather girthy root. Wide enough to support us with no danger. So I'm pretty comfortable on these. Uh, you'll see where it starts to get hairy. This, no problem, no problem. And this is really cool because it looks like the wall of some some ancient structure that's been flipped 90 degrees so it's now the floor okay the fun part starts right now uh including that bat oh okay, so far so good oh great 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 i love that wait where did that other bat The other one went over the side. Oh my god, it died. My brother in Christ, you have wings. How did you fall to death? I'm stunned. Sometimes gravity does work uh, in my favor. It's a very neutral, cruel deity. But every now and then, it likes to smile upon me and bless me with good fortune. Oh! Ah! Good fortune, good fortune, good fortune. From gravity. Oh, benevolent and merciful gravity. I would never call you cruel. You are, you are nothing if not my... my magnanimous benefactor, gravity. Oh good, we are done making drops. We get the Chinquidea. And even more of these. Before we uh, read that item description, there is another thing to grab along what, again, I'm going to assume used to be a wall. Unless it's just built to be like this. We'll see this type of architecture again. Wrought iron talisman depicting an ancient dragon boosts physical damage negation. The ancient dragons who ruled in the prehistoric era before the Erd Tree would protect their lord as a wall of living rock. 
and so it is, the shape of the dragon has become symbolic of all manner of protection. That's such a cool little background detail. Also, short sword given to high-ranking clergyman of Farum Azula raises potency of bestial incantations. The design celebrates the beast's five fingers, symbolic of the intelligence once granted upon their kind. So, that's the visual pun going on there. Cinque, five. The <laughs> a Cinque Dea is a weapon of Italian origin, Venetian specifically, and it literally means five fingers. Uh, and... It's called that because it, that's supposed to be approximately the width. Is that a face? Is that a face? Mysteries to explore another time. Five fingers. <laughs> oh, don't worry. We'll have plenty of time to, to frolic about in the swamps of Kaelid and solve that mystery. Just chew on that for a bit while we talk about Italian stabby pointy things. Uh, yeah, the width of the base of the blade is supposed to be about five, approximately five fingers long. Or five fingers across. Uh, now we're gonna grab this. So just putting the, the five finger, the five claw seal on it is just kind of cute. <laughs> there we go. That is the spell that I forgot to pick up, and it will be boosted greatly by the meteorite staff that I did grab while I was here in the streets of Sage's Ruins. Uh, so with that out of the way, our time in Kaelid, at least this go around, has come to an end. Uh, let's make sure we throw that on in place of Rock Blaster. And then... Uh, we'll grab a few things. There is a, uh, not a talisman. I believe there's a crystal tier up here that I just forgot to get. Uh, but it will let us fight a new enemy. We've seen them someplace. Oh, yeah, the sheep rolling. Ah, it's the cutest thing ever. There are a lot of little yeah, animal interactions like that. Ah, it's adorable. Uh, so, giant trolls. They are large and intimidating. They are not spooky. Because like many, many giant enemies in Soulsborne games, uh, the way to go is just directly underneath them. The only thing it can really do which admittedly I'm doing a terrible job with dodging, uh, is stomp their feet. Just throw like a little petulant tantrum. You do have to watch when he pulls his sword out because the AOE, even when he slams down in front of him, it, it will hit behind him. That and sometimes... He will do a big combo. Oh, he might be moving for it. Not spooky. Got a little spooky. <laughs> yeah, the Strength Knot Crystal Tear for the Physic Flask. Uh, when we mix that in, what it will allow us to do is get a Strength Boost for the duration of the effect. It's not terrible. It's not anything that... I'm going to be using anytime soon, though. Although there may come a point where I go for maximum bonk. But for now, I'm sticking with the combo that I already have set up. The half HP heal and the boost to my charge attacks. We'll have plenty of those slots to fill in, though, as we go. Not going to be adding to any of those uh, here in Summon Water Village. We are here for something else. Oh! No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I, I think not. Negative. Oh, a human bone shard. Lovely. No, we are here for something much more adorable. Uh, also a talisman. 
because if there they are, you see the turtles ahead and there's an imp and a fog door locked with a stone sword key. As above, so below. It's turtles all the way down. Peaceful little critters. There is one thing that I want to show with them. If you attack them, they curl up into their shells. <laughs> So, in this turtle-themed basement, what do we get? The Green Turtle Talisman. There are a lot of turtles in this game, by the way. A talisman in the shape of a green turtle raises stamina, recovery speed, so it's our Chloranthi ring. Turtles are known as a nutritious ingredient, symbolic of inexhaustible power. However, those who hold turtles to be wise creatures consider the practice of eating their meat to be barbarous. Something that people have taken notice of is that there are a lot of turtles in this game and a lot of turtle imagery. Uh, and somebody connected that to George R.R. R. Martin. Who, uh, who had turtles growing up as pets because I think the story goes that he couldn't keep cats or dogs in his apartment complex. Uh, and he would, he would use his imagination to cast these two turtles he kept in stories, which according to him, that that's the origins of A Song of Ice and Fire. There was a Twitter thread that also pointed out when he went to the Emmys once in... Oh, right on time. Oh! I wanted to get that timing. Welcome to the jam! Uh, when he went to the Emmys once, he was wearing a turtle pin. But it... Looks nothing like... It anything that's in the game. Uh, my guess is maybe that Miyazaki either already knew this because he was uh, uh, he was already a big fan of Martin's works. Uh, he either already knew about this or he found out when they talked. Oh, that was a little spooky. She can't one-shot me though, so that's fine. Oh, I really wanted it. I really wanted to jump it. So close. So close. Recusant Vanquished. That's a familiar title. It's the same title as the guy who invaded us in Stormhill, uh, Henricus. The one with the mace and the tabard with the eye on it. This is a really cool looking charm. A talisman carried by assassins who strike unseen. Patterned on a scorpion, freshly shed, shed of its exoskeleton. Its claws seizing a heart with a blessed glow. Raises holy attack power, but lowers damage negation. Oh, where was I going with that? My guess, my my theory, my game theory <laughs> about uh about Miyazaki and, and Martin and the turtles. I'm I'm guessing like he probably found out when they spoke and maybe gave them like a little more emphasized role at, at, just to pay tribute to an author he likes. Like he made some prominent turtle imagery is like a cutesy homage or it's a coincidence which is also probably more likely i highly doubt martin had any more direct hand what he did do though is one he named the lands between uh but also he was responsible for the history and mythos 
all the backstory stuff. I read an interview where Miyazaki better explained how that collaboration worked and why they did things the way they did. Writing video games is a very different process from writing something like a novel or a script, even something like a script or a movie. Especially games that are as open-ended as FromSoft games, especially this one. Oh my god, I, I am just now thinking about the enormity of the task of writing that went into this, and holy shit. And just the complexity of that task. Because, like, you have to you have to account for so much. You have to account for different outcomes, for quests, uh, players doing things out of a preset linear order. And I mean, even writing for a linear game is quite a bit different because gameplay has to be considered as well. And also, uh, oftentimes what happens is uh, for writers on games, they are molding a story around the gameplay that already exists rather than creating the whole setting and story uh, and characters and plot and all that, and having the developers just follow the script straight through. Nothing in themselves no true justice. Ooh, this is where it is. Ooh, ooh, okay. Not how I, how I foresaw that going. I was just feeling, uh, I was just feeling myself a little bit too much and wasn't expecting the two-shot. Uh, yeah, we're gonna be progressing Blythe's quest while we talk about game writing. And this is that spot that he last spotted that, what did he call him? That traitor Darawil? Well, it's Bloodhound Knight Darawil. So we will be... For character story reasons, bringing in Blythe to help out. Darawil, nothing in a cell is no true justice. No. This is where it ends for you. Probably better to hear his short monologue before we initiate the fight anyway. Didn't do that last time. Oh! Okay, then I'm just gonna do my best to let... Guts do his thing without my interference. I did want that visceral, though. I wanted to see how much that would hurt. Okay, get him, get him, get him. Kick his ass. Uh-oh. Oh, no, 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 no. You're not going to hurt my boy. You're not going to kill my boy. All right, did you heal up? All right, this is all you. Fuck him up. Fuck him up, life. You got this. If you don't got this, I'll jump in. It's fine, you got this. I believe in you. Very good. Very, very good. And we get a Bloodhound Spang out of it. Quite nice. I want to check that out before we talk to him. Curved greatsword with a gently undulating blade wielded by bloodhound knights. A fearsome blade capable of brutal airborne attacks. And... I mean, the weapon art sounds cool, but it doesn't give us additional lore, so... <sighs> right. There you are. Not to work for it, but it's done. Don't say I'm not a man of my word. Here's your prize. Oh, yes. I should say. If you venture north to Rea Lucaria and come across a venerable blacksmith who's a little on the large side, tell him I sent you, and he'll be sure to treat you right. I owe you one, I reckon. Ah, will do. That's enough chit chat for now. It's time we parted ways. Already? I feel like we were just starting to hit it off. Okay. Well, 
now I can pick up where I left off. If I remember where. I believe I was just generally talking about the level of complexity that goes into writing uh, for games. They're also really iterative, so changes happen often and can often happen rapidly. Oh, this is it. You there? Could you help us out, Cully? Oh? Oh, yeah. You? Yeah, you there. Stop pretending you can't see me. Try attack. Okay. What you go and do that for? Mm. Oh, yes. I remember. Some clod turned me into a tree. You were just breaking the spell, weren't you? Thank you. The name's Bok. I was pushed out of the cave. Told not to come back. Not ever. Then I ended up as a tree. <laughs> Lucky you came along, really. Oh, what a shame. When they threw me out of the cave, they took everything I owned. And so this is all I have to express my thanks. I hope you can forgive me. Yay! Or, well, if you can afford to wait for a while, I could sneak back into the cave and bring back something of actual value. And then I'd be of some real use to you, I reckon. Right, but I'll need a moment. I'm, I'm frightened of them, so I have to gather myself. My knees start knocking, just thinking about that god-awful cave on the shore. Right, but I'll need a moment. I'm... Bach, sweet, precious Bach. Someone turned him into a tree. Uh, real quick, you can't parry on a horseback, but... But... If you parry someone who's attacking you while they're on horseback, uh, you will instantly dismount them. And you'll set their horse free! Free! To wander! Okay, go. Go, horse. Go. Go, go away. Go somewhere. Believe it. I'm, I'm sure it's suited to the wilds of uh, the lands between. Uh, so where I was going with that story was Miyazaki didn't want to pull George R. R. Martin that far out of his normal comfort zone to the point where his work would suffer. So... Martin went hog wild on the mythos and all the backstory and FromSoft gets to keep the game sprawling and open because their contributions to the story are all what's happening in present in the plot and throughout this huge grand adventure. And now I'm just going to wait until nightfall because we have something pretty cool. So when night falls, a couple of things change. A couple of different enemies and a couple of new bosses show up. This one is the Knight's Cavalry. Cower in fear of the night, huh? really love this theme too and the aesthetic is super cool the flowy hair part of the helmet in the in the all black cape it's just stylish mm. 
Not too hard of a fight, though. Definitely less intense than the Tree Sentinel. Uh, especially since we are fighting the Knight's Cavalry here. A little bit closer to where we're supposed to be, if not... I mean, if we're not even a little overpowered. What? A little... That hero soldier! Oh my god! Damn, that spell is good, though. Compared to the Tree Sentinel, he doesn't track as well. Uh, his range is a lot better. But he he feels slower to me. And his moveset is less problematic. It's pretty simple, too. Uh, so even though we're just chipping away at the horse, that's not exactly a problem. Uh, in fact, it's going to make this go a whole lot quicker if we do dismount him, which, yeah, it's looking like there's like two hits left on the horse, so. Ooh, 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 ooh. he cut that angle. can get the fall. Ah, it wasn't fully charged. This is a good theme, too. Just one more. Yeah! Okay. Now I can do this! I love that there's a unique critical animation for that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah! I'm just throwing my ass in his face and he has no idea what to do about it. Get the repeating thrust Ash of War, a smithing stone, and most importantly, we don't make that soldier a hero a second time. Good God. All right, now we are off to not Murkwater, that's Patch's Cave. We're just going to take uh, an express trip back to the Grace site as it is a little bit quicker. Uh, we are going down into a heel lake again. This time we're looking for a different tunnel. Because I just want to be done with a keel lake entirely this episode. And there's still one or two more things left down here. Back this way, I believe. Yes, it is. This one's a little bit easy to miss until you spot the torch. Speaking of, might want to equip that. Oh my god, I can't believe that put me into heavy load. Okay, we're not equipping the torch. It's probably bright enough already. Can't wait to get the lantern. <laughs> oh, every time it's something extremely, extremely light that puts me over. I do not believe that we want to roll off at that one anyway. I think there's a later one that we do, though. Hopefully I'm remembering that right. If not... That's a problem for another day. Ooh, woo, that was smooth. Oh, by the way, the ones with uh the ones with the backpacks, the satchels. If you light those on fire, they will explode and do a ton of damage. end of this, we'll get another uh, another mini-boss with a unique talisman. We're kind of after that. 
it's on our way. <laughs> Truthfully, more important to me are all of the smithing stones that we're going to get along the way. Plus just, you know, clearing the boss out here. Everything must go. This game is being liquidated. These are the kinds of dungeons that you need to look for if you're running low on upgrade materials, though. These mines. They're all over you. Uh, sometimes enemies drop them, but you can also just pluck them straight off the walls. Like flowers. Ooh, that's gonna cost me. Then again, things go real bad. There's always plan jam. God, I can't believe I didn't know how good this was. Oh yeah, of course, try fingers. We're in a dark hole. Or they're talking about the rats, which is much nastier. <laughs> do not, do not try finger. We'll just make our way deeper in. So what do we got? I think he's not going to aggro. So instead, we'll clear him out. So we don't have to deal with two of them at once. He was getting ready to belch fire at me from that lantern. And do we need to disturb him? We do. He'll aggro as soon as we grab the smithing stone he's working on. Wonder from this poor miner. Ooh, this... It's just a shotgun. Oh! Hey! It's an, at this point, it is an ancient from soft enemy type dude who throws bombs. Uh, and you know, classics never go out of style. Some things just work. Some things are just a menace. The dogs have been around forever. There's a reason. Every single one of their games since Demon Souls. I mean, aside from Darasene, all of the the action horror ones. The dogs are just menaces. So we'll send that back up. Because what's in front of us now is the boss of the mines. Oh, good. We'll get this first. Should be rank one still. So that giant troll that we fought earlier was actually preparing us for this. He's going to be a little bit more spooky than the, the, uh, the troll we fought earlier. But still, like, look at this damage. And he really still cannot do tons about this. He's a little more capable of dealing with me, but... There's one attack that he's going to do that I just have to watch for. Here it comes. Oh, no, we're off to a bad start. Yep. Yeah, that desperation attacks the killer. Let's try that again. Oh my god! What a spell! Holy... Holy hell! 
damn, is this what, what being a caster is like? Casters just feel like this all the time? What have I been missing out on? Wow. Uh, and you'll notice that's why I'm uh, doing so many jumping attacks in this fight in particular. Like, I like my jumping attacks. I, I go to them often. I go to that well a lot. <laughs> but in this fight in particular, uh, eep. okay, we're fine. We're fine. Mm, just have to finish it. He is slightly armored. So standing attacks from my halberds will just... They'll do damage, but they'll bonk off of him. All right, so let's check the talisman that we got. Getting a lot of those today. Roar Medallion, a bronze medallion depicting a roaring giant. Enhances roar and breath attacks. In ancient times, the giants were mortal enemies of the Erd Tree. Their bellowing roars desolated nature, triggered avalanches, and whipped up storms of flame. Storms of flame. There, wait, try attacking. What? No. Oh, this was nothing? Damn it. <laughs> oh good, we get reception down here so we can connect to the fast travel network. Sometimes you, you don't always get that in the caves or any subterranean area. Well, I took you for no matter. Lay out your arms, then. And that should give us more than enough. Two plus three, both of these. Oh no, it's only gonna be plus three and plus two. That's fine. We're gonna be swimming in in low level smithing materials uh, eventually. You've met Garank, I take it. Then owing to our duties shared, we are now comrades in arms. I think you've earned this. The power of the Golden Order to aid the hunt of those who live in death. I serve the Golden Order that I might put this crooked land to rights following only the guidance of the Great Elden Ring. Those who live in death fall outside the principles of the Golden Order. Their mere existence sullies the guidance of gold, tainting its truth. And so it is the vermin must be exterminated, down to the very last. Okay. Well, we can study incantations. One of the incantations of the Golden Order, Fundamentalists, used by hunters of those who live in death. Enchants armament a held in right hand with holy affinity attacks. This incantation is especially damaging to those who live in death. Any felled by this incantation cannot be revived. The role of the hunters is to stamp out defiled reason, all for the perfection of the Golden Order. Oh, so we have religious fundamentalists who want to exterminate the vermin. Cool, 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 cool. And litany of proper death creates an image of order and otherwise says nothing new. Ah, oh, you will it. Yeah, I like, I like his incantations more. And uh, maybe more the philosophy underpinning them. <laughs> But we have committed to, in Gronk's words, bringing more death. But for now, let's go have some fun. Let's go have some fun times, some funsies in the lake. Uh, and once we are done, that will be the final thing in the lake checked off of our list. And of course, I have saved the best for last. I warmed us up with a bit of horse combat earlier with the Knight's Cavalry. Now we get to fight the dragon 
for whom the lake is named. This fight from horseback is fun as hell. I love the dragon fights. And it's a good thing I do because there are several of them. <laughs> And in a lot of ways, it's a FromSoft dragon. But the wrinkle of doing this on horseback is just in, in an, a giant open field like this. Strafing alongside the fire breath. Oh. Okay, when he goes up like this. Yeah. I used the iframes to dodge it because I didn't react in time to go forward. Uh, he'll do that slam like almost directly down. It's a dive bomb. I, the my, oh no! The angle wasn't good. I was getting too greedy with it. Uh, when he does that slam down, just run directly forward and you'll go under him. Oh, that's not good. Uh, ah, damn it. That's a hard attack to deal with. Oop. Oh. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yes. Why does it default to no? Excuse me? My horse. My kingdom for my horse. <laughs> That's about the worst way that, <laughs> that fight could have started. No way, this is the end. <laughs> Let's see, I missed three attacks in a row, got immediately dismounted. <laughs> Took three attempts for some reason to get back on aggro, for, back on Torin. <laughs> Holy shit. Back on Torin. <laughs> and then missed again. <laughs> oh, that's great. This is going much better now. It's about to spin. Gotta watch that. Not getting dismounted. Yeah! Oh! They made the horse combat so damn fun that, like, even though Akil is more or less a generic one of their dragons, even more so in the sense that, like, you already know there are going to be more like this. There are also unique dragon bosses. Do not, don't get me wrong, but like my, uh oh, this is bad. Oh! <laughs> Okay, I don't like fighting him here. But the point being that, like, this can be a generic dragon fight, and a, a one of which I've done a bunch of times now, and it's still just super fun because of the basic core mechanic here. That's much better. Uh, are we doing fire? Mm. I'm not going to get quite as greedy with the angle this time. I'm going to go a little wider. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. Oh, ah, ah. And we get a dragon heart for that. A new draconic power is available at the Dragon Cathedral. The Cathedral of Dragon Communion. Yeah, let's keep that rolling right into some new stuff. Dragon Claw, Dragon Maw, or the Fire? Oh, I'm really torn. This is a bit generic, but it's useful. The Claw... I'm also looking at the requirements and, like, do I really want to put... Do I really want to make this build worse by, like dumping a couple of extra points in Arcane. Then again, the build is already quite bad. 
it's already kind of everything and everywhere. Hmm. Tough decision. I'll think about that more next time. Uh, for now, we're going to do two more things. First, I'm going to shout out my $10 and up patrons for the month of May. Thank you to Wi-Fi, to Cleric Beastie, to Ditlutz, not a tick with Wi-Fi, uh, Cracky, Caesar Zamudio, Sad Salad Dressing, Moody, Cinderland Ockerblom, Victor T, Kyle, Sam, Evan, Chris Makesner Croft, Absent Miasma, Breton Buchanan, and did I already say Wolfman 500? Come over here, won't you? If not, you get it twice this month. You, you're, you're tarnished, aren't you? I would advise against taking the main gate into the castle. It's tightly guarded by hardened old hands. Oh, tr tr try the opening right here. The guards don't know about it. You'll breach the castle undetected. Uh, okay. Yes, that's the spirit. You're just the kind of tarnish that I like. I pray for your success. Use that opening to breach the castle. The guards, you'll slip. The guards don't know about the hole in the wall, though. Approach the gates. I'll signal them to open. It's only your neck on the line after all. I mean, he does say he'll open the main gate for us, and he did warn us what's up there. The gates! Open the gates! But there is treasure. And it's just right there. And this doesn't look that bad. Yup. You don't want to take the main gate. That is going to do it for now. Next time, we are going to be doing the first major dungeon of the game, Stormvale Castle. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.